goes. So, like I said, so we got a lot of good feedback over uh, the two posts I made about uh, what do you want to see. Some guys messaged us, some guys posted on there. So the first one I was going to go over is single read versus double read, and then uh, how to tune a call. Let me grab a double read. Hold on one second. So, single read versus double read. We'll start off with the most basic part of this deal. Uh, obviously, in a single read, you have one single read you're moving. In a double read, you have a thinner read usually stacked on top of the regular read. Uh, is one better than the other? Uh, that's hard to say. It depends on what you want to use it for. Um, a single read will make more ducks. Uh, you have some guys argue about that, but single read will make more ducks, period. Uh, it's a little harder to run, but that can be a misunderstood statement as well. Uh, technically, you're moving two pieces of mylar on a double read, so no matter what, if it's the same tone board and everything's equal, it takes more air or pressure to run the double read because you're moving twice as much mylar, or close to twice as much. Uh, what does a double read do for you? So when you lay that reed on top of the bottom reed, what it does is it acts as a governor. So, like we talked about in earlier videos, the way these duck calls make sound is this reed is going to cycle up and down. It's going to cycle super fast, though. Uh, and that makes the frequency, some of it's from the reed vibrating when you hear the duck sound, some of it's from it hitting the tone board. Uh, but, when you have two reeds stacked on top of each other, this top reed governs how much that bottom reed can flex. So what it's doing is it's acting as a governor. So if you have somebody that puts uh, pressure or air on the call that is not as uh, as efficient or as it's not as good as it could be, uh, instead of the call squealing out or going over, like if you're real tight and you squeal a call out, uh, that, that bottom reed just can't move as much to do the error. So it's a little bit of a, a governor is uh, the best way to think of it. Uh, should you use a single read or a double read? If you want to learn to blow a call really well, like as good as you can run one, then you should learn on a single read. If you want to put not as much time on a call and uh, you just want to run it during duck season, you're not going to touch it any other time than that, then a double read is a great thing to have. Uh, and if you just like a double read the way it feels, because it's going to have a little more pushback, because like I said, you're moving almost twice as much mileage. There's nothing wrong with it. But keep in mind, once that top read's on there, you cannot vibrate the bottom read as fine, and you also cannot take as big of a... Uh, you can't get the, the read to go as full in range, so you do lose a little on a double read. Um, but with that said, if you make a poor note on either call, uh, they're, they're just about as poor on either one. So, um, what's up, Cole? Uh, single read con artist. Oh, right on, buddy. Uh, but yeah, so typically, uh, if you have somebody that's new to calling, or somebody, uh, especially like a kid, if you put a single read in their hand to start with, they'll never have an issue, uh, because they just won't know any difference. Kind of like, I mean, my age, we've pretty much grown up shooting steel shots, so you don't really notice. Um, but, uh, in my mind, there is zero advantage to having, like, a double read on your lanyard as, like, a finishing call. Uh, I think you can actually get quieter and softer on a single read. So, if I run a double read, and if most of the time if somebody runs a double read well, it's not going to sound a whole lot different than a single read, except for on the very extreme ends of the ranges. So, and these are about the same tone board, not much different, but on my, my single, I can get pretty soft. Uh, now, this isn't every double read. This is just a rule as the same tone board double read versus a single read on the same of everything. I can't get quite as soft on a double. Push it just a little harder. 
if I let that note fall like I do on a single reed, it's going to go a little flatter. <laughs> See, I lose the I lose the duck right there, but on a single, because the tip is going to run a little bit easier. <laughs> but that takes more control. So that's what I was telling you. Like the biggest advantage is if you're not, uh, if your fundamentals aren't really good on a lot of it, you'll start off with, <laughs> but you can just push a little harder <laughs> on that double and you'll get more of a duck sound out of it. So that's the biggest advantage of a double reed. Uh, the other thing that's an advantage is if you get tight, which a lot of guys learning, they're gonna tighten up and they're gonna, instead of getting that full duck out, they're gonna get tight and they're gonna overblow the call. They're gonna do that sound. That's because everything gets tight and you're pushing air too fast. Uh, but on a double reed, if you do the same thing, if I'm open, but if I get tight on a double reed, that that reed governs that from going too crazy and making that high pitch sound. So that's where a lot of guys, uh, depending on how you want to say, they're more forgiving. So that would be the biggest advantage on that. Uh, but for the most part, I try to, anybody that's comfortable on a single reed, by all means, it's down a single reed. Uh, tuning. A lot of guys ask me on tuning. Now, on my stuff, you do not cut reeds on my calls. They come in reed kits, and I, we have four reed kits, and this didn't count the double reeds, because the double reed is just standard reeds with the single, with the thin reed on top. But uh, we have four reed kits, so that's four different cuts. So, let me get a regular reed out here. So like I run, I run HD reeds in most of my stuff I hunt with, which is just a little bit bigger dog ear. So that is an HD reed, which is just heavy dog ear, and that is the standard dog ear reed. Sorry, I'm showing both phones here at once. So an HD reed will be a little bit raspier. It'll be a little bit more. It'll have a little more hold in it. That's because uh, when you take mylar away, you can move the front of that reed easier. It's lighter. Uh, you'll have to be a few steps longer in an HD read for the same read in a standard read. Then we have a dagger cut read and a gumdrop read. The dagger reads have a long taper, and some guys just like the way that long taper runs. It's a little bit more raspier than, uh, it's in between rasp of, a, of an HD and a standard. And then the gumdrop read is a skinnier read, runs just like a standard read, just a lot lighter. Uh, what they are is those are the, the widths of the reeds before we changed sizes two years ago. So the guys that like the old style reeds better will like these. Um, so how do you tune one? On my stuff, you pick the reed length you like, and there is a tab on the back of all my reeds. And that tab fits in the tone channel. So once it's in the channel, you cannot knock that from being crooked. And it also does two more things. It lets you know the reed is all the way to the back. And when you put the cork in the call, it can't, can't snag the reed and bend it. So you know you get the same length every time that way. Um, on my reeds, they're engraved. I'm going to try to, it's so hard to see on the camera. So you can see that it's engraved with the size and the style. So you can run the engraving down. For more hold and wine, you can run the engraving up for more rasp, and it'll be a little bit harder to run. Uh, it's more abrupt. This the same way on the doubles. You can run them up or down. The top reed stays the same, but on the double reeds, you can run them engraving down, engraving up. And it does the same thing. So, to tune one, you would take the reed you think you want. You put it in the call. Like I said, you take the, the notch on the reed, and you put that in the tone channel. All the way to the back you don't have to chew the cork hard you mostly just want it wet because all you're doing is if it's wet it'll slide in there a little bit better uh -huh. uh, find yourself a tool to put it in I use a little punch I put my finger my thumb on the tab because you're gonna put a little pressure on it right now so you don't snap it and once you get it started you slide it back what you do not want is a gap right here from the cork to the call you want to keep that as tight as you can get it. So make sure it's seated. And you put your call back together and run it. See if it's where you want. If you want to try another size read, all you do is repeat. 
Um, typically, your, uh, how do you know if you got the right size read for you? One, it's comfort levels. What are you comfortable with? Uh, is it heavy enough for you? Can you push the notes out of it as hard as you need to push it? And two, what I, what I generally suggest to you guys is find the longest reads you can run comfortably. There's, there's two reasons for this. We put, uh, I put grooves in the boards, and those are not spit grooves there. They're more of an air channel. They taper out on the slope of the board there. They're a little bit past the shoulder on the tone channel. And what that does is, when this reads in your call, it allows air, because you never will stick a call with a tip. You stick a call with this section of the reed. That's where the saliva pins that down. So you can usually always get air under the tip. The trick is to get it to break free off that fat part of the tone board. So what those grooves allow is air to get under. It has nothing to do with water. It allows air to get under the reed better. Uh, it's pretty hard to get the entire section that's cut out full. So it just allows enough space. That yeah, phone just needs to focus. It allows enough space to get... Uh, air underneath it for the reed to break loose if it is pinned down from moisture. So the other advantage, the reason I was going with that, is the longer this reed sticks out, that fly is driving me nuts, the longer this reed sticks out, the more leverage you make when air hits it. So this is why, not Michael's, but if you got a call that's real sticky, uh, especially if it doesn't have air grooves or anything in the tone board to, to help it, uh, if it's real sticky, you could have a buddy that runs it and it sticks all the time. Another guy will get it. And most of the time, if it, if it stops being sticky, it's because he usually puts a little longer reed in it. And it's just got enough leverage to pick it up and break it off the tumble when you hit it with air. So the longest reed you can comfortably run in a duck call is the best reed. Uh, it also makes more ducks the longer the reed gets. When you get them shorter and shorter... Uh, you lose just mathematically the amount of up and down that reed can take on a cycle when you're making sound. So you end up with more. That's why you end up higher pitched because it's it's vibrating finer. The longer it gets, the mathematically the more stroke that reed takes and the more ducks you can get out of it. So you just go through your reed kits and you find the cut and the style you like and whatever's comfortable. Now, uh, I ran that call earlier with the engraving down so it'll have more hold and wind. You can flip it over, so the engraving's up. You put the tab in just the same, like I said. So now, now the engraving's where I can read it clearly. And now if I put it back together, this call will be a little bit raspier. It won't have as, as much mush on the feed. It'll be more of an abrupt feed. It won't have as much hold when I try to squeal it. So this just kind of depends on how you like to run a call. Most of the time, if a guy likes a lot of whine and squeal, and he likes to do a lot of bouncing hens, and he's got a real mushy, kind of squeaky feed like I got, he's going to like the reed down. If he likes to hit the notes real hard and stop, and he likes a good hard single cut feed, he'll like the reed up. So this would be reed up. It's got a little hold, but it doesn't squeal out as much. And then the feed will be a little bit more abrupt. heavier so I'll flip that read over again and then you can hear the difference so now this would be engraving down like I said it just takes a second to do this all you gotta do is make sure there's no air gap from the cork to the back of the notch and then this would be engraving down so more hold That's the difference between running one and grabbing down and grabbing up. So, four reed kits. Uh, I should know this off the top of my head, but I think we got two kits that have eight each and then two kits that have four each. And this isn't counting the double reed kit. Uh, but so there's an absolute ton of options to uh, to figure out what fits you. It's a super easy way. It eliminates all scissors. Um, and, like, if you run a 1-2 HD reed, and you, you would blow that read out when you get the next one to HD read. It is the same thing. Now, if you've got a call that you're going to scissor cut, uh, a lot of guys have an issue when they scissor cut because they take off 
an extreme amount of mylar. So when somebody says a slight amount of mylar to uh, change the sound, that's a whole lot of mylar right there. That's a big cut on a reed. What you're trying to do is you're trying to cut it. Let's see if I can get that in the camera. That's a lot of mylar to cut off. You're trying to cut the minimum amount the scissors can take at once to get it back. So for me, it's just so much easier to step it back 5 thou or 6 thou on the laser and sell them in sizes. So, uh, but that's it for today, boys. If, uh, if you got anything you want me to cover, like I said, post up in here what you want to see on the Ducklander calling page or on uh, my main page. And uh, I'll see if I can make you a video over it and see if I can help you. But uh, like I said, if you need any help in the future, just hit us up. Be happy to help.